Um, but good morning, everyone. Thank you for um, taking the time to join us this morning. Um, we're going to be talking about understanding finance for startups with Sarah from OKR Financial. So I'll pass it over to her in just a few moments. Um, if you have questions throughout, um, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, you can ask questions as we go along. Um, I'm just going to take a quick moment to introduce myself for um, any of you who haven't met me um, and are not part of our Queen Startup Runway or Kingston Innovation Ecosystem. Um, uh, my name is Amanda Gilbert. I'm the Communications Coordinator with Queen's Partnerships and Innovation. I have two of my colleagues here, Shoma Sina and Rick Boswell as well. Um, we host a number of workshops and acceleration programs um, with the support of the Government of Canada um, through the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario. Um, so I know many of you are joining us from outside of Kingston this morning, so um, if, if you haven't done so yet, um, you can um, put in the chat where, where you're from, um, what your business is, uh, that would be great. And while you're doing that, I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge that Queen's University is situated on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. Um, we're very grateful to be able to live and learn on these lands today. Um, so if you're putting your location in the chat, if you also know the traditional lands that you're situated on, um, please feel free to add that in the chat as well. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll jump right into handing it over to Sarah to start us off and um, looking forward to learning alongside everyone else today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so my name is Sarah Livingstone. So I've been working with OKR Financial for about a year and a half. Um, we're really focused on kind of just helping the Canadian ecosystem um, access non dilutive financing and just kind of educating on what government funding is available um, and what financing are available for startups. So super excited to be here. I hope you guys all learned something. Um, and then if there are any questions as I walk through this presentation, it's gonna be probably about 30 minutes realistically. Um, and then maybe we can have another 30 minutes of questions at the end, but stop me at any time. I really like kind of an interactive um, crowd. So I'm looking forward to kind of hearing your feedback and your questions along the way. So what am I really going to cover today? So I'm going to give you an overview of us um, here at, over, at OKR Financial, including myself and kind of my role um, and how I got involved in this field. I'm going to go over what we offer um, and how we help entrepreneurs. I'm going to kind of do a really broad landscape of the Canadian tax credits and government funding that are available for startups as well. I'm, I'm going to talk about asset-based lending as well. We're going to also do kind of a comparison of debt versus equity, because that's really kind of the first two um, options for startups and kind of when is the best time to use each. Um, I'm also going to go through our process and how you work with us and then really what makes us different. So let's get right into it. Okay, so you're um, a startup, you're maturing from your R&D until the building and launching of your product. So what options are really available for you for funding? That's really when your company is going to have that cash burn accelerated rate. So you're going to be going through cash um, quite a bit quicker. And then the companies really need that capital inflow. So where do you get that capital funding? So the first spot that most entrepreneurs go to is really friends and family. That's really kind of the basis of how you're going to start the company. Um, and once you can kind of prove that friends and family are willing to invest in you, it just makes you a lot more investable as well. Then from there, you can go to angel investors. So those are individuals that are willing to put cash up front. Um, they're either going to kind of, you know, ask for equity, um, a board on your seat, that kind of thing. There are also pre-seed stages, pre stages VCs in Canada as well. So these are companies that are looking to do investments in pre-series and pre-series uh, pre A. And then there are also um, traditional banks, but they typically don't like lending to startups because there's really no hard assets or financial data for them to lend against. So that's really the best time to be looking at government funding and non-dilutive capital. So that's what we're really going to try to kind of um, shed some light on today is what is available for Canadian companies and then how to access that um, funding and then how to use that funding to grow your company.
So did you know that actually 90% of the programs require a dollar to dollar match in Canada? So that would be an example like my tax is a good one where you have to kind of show the contributing funds to access those programs. So we really help with that as well. So what we do is we provide a letter of intent, which qualifies you for the matching funds. I'm so happy to kind of have my info at the end. So reach out if you're looking for help on accessing that funding. Um, it can take anywhere from three to 16 weeks for approval and the receipt of the funds from the government. Um, so that's another area that we come in and we help lend against um, the anticipated government funding. And then there's also funding which is provided in monthly or quarterly tranches as well. So again, we're able to kind of leverage that funding from the government as an asset within the company and provide the financing right up front. So it's a great way to kind of provide that accelerated growth. So government funding is by far the cheapest source of funding without question. Um, government gives the best rates um, and it's just a great way to kind of maintain full ownership of your company. Um, the caveat to that is it's slow in terms of submission approval and the receipt of the funds. And that's really why we come into play and where we help um, entrepreneurs in the ecosystem is we really help you leverage your tax credits and grant financing with short-term loans. And then that prepares you for when you want to do that equity raise or that venture round. Um, it makes more sense for your business because you're in a better position. What we're really finding in the ecosystem here in Canada is there's just too many companies that are taking on um, small amounts of uh, equity raises for a really small amount, and they're not getting the best bang for your buck. So that's really where we try to help entrepreneurs and companies as they approach us early on, and then we help them through that growth traje trajectory. Do, so really you're a startup um, and you're coming to us because you need that equity or that investment story early on. Um, and that's really where the traditional lenders aren't going to be able to assist you. So really what we do to give you a high level overview, and then we'll dive into it deeper, is we provide three areas of financing for entrepreneurs. So we do government program financing. Um, Shred is the biggest one we work with. I'll go into detail about that in a little bit, but we also work with any 2,500 of the government programs that have, are available. And then we'll look at federal and provincial as well. Um, here in Nova Scotia, we just secured funding against the Wild Blueberry Efficiency Fund. So we really can work with all government programs that are available. We also do asset secured loans. I'll get into that a little bit uh, in more detail as well. So that's really when you would have a big contract or a big purchase order and you're looking for funding um, against that. It's just a way for you to either secure the inventory or secure the manpower that you need to fulfill that contract or that purchase order. And then lastly, we also do equity financing as well. So we really do all three um, areas of financing. We like to start on the non-dilutive side just because it positions a company in a better um, situation for that they can come to us and look for that equity. And then we're also just really connected within the ecosystem as well. So we're a national uh, company. We're offering our, our services nationally across Canada. Um, always looking to engage with entrepreneurs. We have a lot of resources at our hands as well. Um, so we can really help identify those government programs that are out there. I'll give a kind of overview today, but really we like to connect on an individual basis to better understand the business and then kind of provide insight in what funding is available. Any questions so far from the crowd at all yet? Okay, I think we're good. So really um, small, medium businesses need growth capital. They need it now. Like it's it's always someone coming to us and they need that, that investment right away. And they really want to hold on to that equity. So that's really where we like to focus on that growth, the non-dilutive way. And that's the need that we're really meeting. Um, and then why do we care? So we really understand um, kind of the entrepreneur struggle. We're all uh, serial entrepreneurs. Um, our managing partner is two-time angel of the year, super engaged within the community. And then we really like working with accelerators and universities um, and any other government bodies that are kind of helping support Canadian companies in the ecosystem. Um, I get excited every day when I get out of bed to kind of further engage with entrepreneurs. There's just so much 
great growth coming out of Canada right now. And it's super empowering to be a part of that process of, with entrepreneurs. So we do work, so I'm just going to answer the question in the chat. So we do operate primarily in Canada. We also work in the UK, and then we can do a little bit out of the UK with European Union, Union um, government funding, but we're mostly a Canadian-based company, and we operate in the US a little bit as well um, to answer that question. Okay, so now we're going to talk about when to use debt and then when to use equity. So really, um, you're a pre-revenue company. So sometimes the only option beyond friends and family um, is grants or to take on debt. So really your balance sheet assets. So you have assets that can be securitized like land or equipment. Um, and then there's also that non-traditional. So it's really a different approach and where we differentiate ourselves from a big bank is we look at shred um, grants, monthly reoccurring revenue as an asset within the company. And then we leverage that to provide financing. And then you don't have to provide any personal guarantees. The only thing that we look to um, utilize really are those government programs. And then the speech capital. So you need the funds quickly under a month. Um, and you can't wait for the due diligence of equity documents. So you'll find as you do your first equity raise, it takes always at least three to four months longer than expected. It's a, it's a long process and it takes a little while to come to completion. So a lot of companies come to us in that intermediate stage where they need that financing right away. Um, and then we're able to provide that um, as you close your equity round. And then there's also material valuation inflection. So you believe that within the next 12 to 24 months, a major valuation change will take place. So that's either securing a big government program or a contract, whatever it might be, but you're in that rapid growth stage where in the next 12 to 24 months, there'll be a big change within the company. And you're just trying to see yourself to that next stage to do that equity raise um, in the appropriate timeline. And then when to use equity. So that's really when the gasoline home fire capital. So it comes down to um, CACA and LTV. So that's where you need to accelerate your customer acquisition with a profitable formula. So that's in reference um, to the cost of acquiring a new customer. And if you can uh, show and prove that you're able to kind of create that um, return, that's when you're gonna wanna take on equity because you need that equity to propel that rapid growth. Um, it's also a good time to take equity when there aren't enough assets on the balance sheets. Um, so assets are already pledged or securitized or none exist. So you kind of have no other options but to take the equity. Strategic partners, that's a really important time. So that's gonna be someone that can kind of help mentor you within your growth project um, and growth stage. And then they're kind of maybe able to provide insights within the industry or provide connections. Um, and then a long development cycle as well. So that's when your product may take years to generate revenue and you have a need for patient capital right away. So now I'm gonna kind of go over the Canadian landscape in terms of Canadian tax credits and grants that are available. Um, one of the resources that we've been kind of recommending to entrepreneurs as well as a site called Hello Pocketed. Um, it's a really nice interface for entrepreneurs to log in. You can create a free profile, but it kind of gives you a highlight of the government programs that are available as well. So definitely recommend that. Happy to connect one-on-one -on -one as well and, and provide some insight. But really the common areas of focus for government funding in Canada are in five key areas. So that's really going to be your R&D, so research and development, um, HR training, commercialization, green initiatives, and capital expenditure. That's really the five areas where government's providing funding. Um, so shred that scientific research experimental development. It's really Canada's largest R&D tax credit program. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about it because it's really something that every entrepreneur that's doing anything innovative should really be looking at. And it's a $4 billion um, grant. And then in the UK, the equivalent to that would be kind of the Innovate UK um, grant. Um, so Shred and the CRA have helped over 30,000 companies in the past year um, access that funding. 
And then uh, the total market size for the top 10 programs that OKR lends against in Canada is a $10 billion pool. So there's definitely government funding available to entrepreneurs, just having it on your radar as kind of the next best step for growth. So the Shred tax credit, credit, so it really began in 1986. It really applies to all Canadian entities as well. And then really all industries can apply. You don't have to be in a scientific uh, lab coat to be applying for this program. And only 5% of companies um, really are wearing those lab coats. So then there's over again, that 30,000 companies a year they help. And then $4 billion approximately a year is distributed through Shred. These are all the industries that are um, able to access Shred as well. So it's definitely not business agnostic. It's any industry um, and it pertains to a lot of industries as well. So this is um, kind of the, the process in claiming Shred. So really you've got a new product or a new process or an improvement to an existing product or an existing process. Um, so then do your due diligence, what really exists and how is it limited? So, you know, start with an internet search is kind of the best uh, first step. Then there's also the supplier discussion. So just make sure that it's um, something new and then testing existing solutions. Um, and then when you look at the Shred project, really what you're doing is you're formulating a test and a hypothesis. You're planning and executing on that test program and then developing logical conclusion. So it's kind of like a, a scientific uh, research project. Um, I'll kind of give an example right now as when you're in the classroom. So you just have to think of, am I stating a thesis and then working out the kinks and the hypothesis um, and then coming to a conclusion? And if you are, then you're eligible for shred because you're really pushing the boundaries on something new. Um, the eligible expenditures for Shred, so the biggest one is definitely salaries. Um, you can also look at subcontractors. Uh, materials are also a part, and then so is proxy. Um, so for any Canadian company, small to medium enterprises generating anywhere less than $800,000 can uh, make the following expenditures against Shred. So it's really great to keep in mind. You can go back up to 18 months as well. Um, salaries, you can kind of get back 65%. Contractors, you can get up to 32% back. And then materials are 42% back. So we're seeing Canadian companies on average making a shred claim of 100,000 or more. And it's just a really great incentive um, as a Canadian company to be collecting that material and um, making that claim on your taxes every year. Um, so for non-CPC Canadian companies um, or any company that's making over 800,000, this is kind of the adjustment that you have to make in your claim, but it's still um, favorable returns. So shred documentation is just really what's important. So we recommend either working with a shred consultant, um, we're happy to make those introductions, but you can do it in house, but it's a, a process and there's definitely wording that needs to be kind of presented to the CRA to get the full claim. Um, but really you have to just kind of do that documentation process. So just watch your time, watch your activities, and then watch your cost. And then if we look at government programs and what's available in Canada, so as long as you're doing one of the following things, so having a regional impact, improving your competitive advantage, exporting, hiring and training new skills, and the creative innovate innovative projects, you'd be eligible for some government funding. Um, so in Canada, there's an average of 2,500 both federal and provincial programs out there. It's a $10 billion um, industry and in funding annually. 90% of those programs do require that dollar to dollar match, which is hard for entrepreneurs um, early on to provide that matching funds. That's where we come in. 95% um, of the programs are non-refundable. So that means that you're given the grant and then you don't have to owe anything back to the government. Um, and then again, so, you know, you can access these programs through government websites. There are a lot of consulting firms that we're happy to introduce as well. They kind of take a percentage of the government grant, but if you're not, um, you know, kind of aware of it, it's a really good option. Um, and then again, as mentioned, there's funding portals. So Hello Pocketed is a really nice one and I recommend it to everyone. 
Um, so the best way to prepare for government funding. So really you have to start by developing a mini business plan. Um, you then engage with a consulting firm or employee. You review your mini, mini business plan every three months or every quarter. And then the application is ready two weeks before the program opens. So you wanna be ready to really uh, jump on that programming, be first in line. And then you engage with the program manager. So that's on a, a government level. So then you engage with the government body. Um, so research and development, again, is gonna be the biggest area for government grants. This is, uh, we'll provide this at the end and I won't go through it in too much detail, but really any project with the objective to grow and generate profits through adoption, adaptation, development, and commercialization of an innovative technology um, driven with either new improvements, products, services, or processes is gonna be eligible for some government funding. So that's really that research and development funding. HR uh, training. So really any candidate right now in Canada that's under the age of 30, there's tons of government grants to support that salary. Um, it's for skilled and unskilled positions. It's candidates facing barrier to employment, um, university students for R&D purposes or summertime work, um, or candidates for apprentices as well. So tons of government funding there. Um, commercialization is another big area for government funding. So that's really implementation of infrastructure modifications, um, the facility modifications and process improvements. So building innovation capacity, um, improving export growth, productivity, performance, and competitiveness as well. And then exhibiting an international trade shows. So there's a lot of government funding available there as well. Um, capital expenditure again. So that's like anything that's in increasing exports um, within Canada or provincially. It improves productivity and efficiency. It introduces a new technology. Um, it retrofits existing technologies as well. So that would be the other area. Um, and then lastly, green initiatives. So we're seeing more and more in this. Um, anything kind of in that smart, smart energy space is super eligible. Um, but it's also for uh, agricultural, industrial, um, inst sorry, institutional buildings as well. Um, anywhere where you're kind of providing a return um, that's going to help the environment is also lots of funding available. So to give you a quick now recap as we kind of um, summarize everything that was said, um, so really that tax and credits and grants, so those are the, the top programs that we lend against. So the first is SHRED, um, the second is IRAP. We do a lot in the innovation supercluster. So either the ocean supercluster, the protein supercluster, um, love lending against those. We also do a lot with interactive digital media tax credits, um, STTC, and then the Canadian uh, Media Fund as well. As mentioned, we also do asset-based financing. It's a little bit for a further along um, company or entrepreneur, but really that would be a company that secured a big purchase order or a big contract. Um, that needs short-term bridge financing against the program or uh, contract. Um, we also do those letters of intent. Again, as mentioned, it's a pretty straightforward process um, to get that dollar-to-dollar -dollar match funding. So it's an application uh, through us, then we do the approval, um, and then we can provide 65% of the financing. And then lastly, the other service that we're offering is equity financing. So we do do equity investments. Uh, we typically like to start on that non-dilutive side and kind of develop a relationship with the entrepreneur. Um, and then we'll look at doing equity investments as well. Um, so how to engage with us and then kind of get financing through us um, or even advice or kind of next steps on where the business should be going and where you should be accessing financing. Um, it all starts with an intro call typically with myself, um, we then have you fill out an application. Once that application is completed, um, and if you're looking for financing from us, that's when the application would come into play. Uh, from there, we would do a term sheet, um, then we would do the loan documents, and then the cash is dispersed. So it's a really straightforward process. We can turn around the financing in anywhere from like 14 to 21 business days. Um, so it's a super quick process. Um, our interest rates are anywhere from about 1.4 to 2.4% monthly. It's simple interest if paid um, monthly. We also do compounding interest as well. 
Um, the term of, term of the contract is typically about six months with us, um, but we'll do anywhere as little as three. And then the security. So we become the first in line um, on a lot of security. But again, you don't have to give any personal guarantees. The only thing that we utilize for the government funding is um, the government program or grant. These are some testimonials of some companies that have worked with us. So we've um, engaged with over 140 companies now across Canada. Um, I like this one from Access Lab. So the process was extremely fast and efficient. Okay, I understands the need of startups and how freeing up cash tied in these assets allow us to extend the runway. So we really do kind of pride ourselves on being able to help entrepreneurs um, access financing really quickly and just continuing that rapid growth trajectory. Um, so what really makes us different? So we're all about speed, as mentioned. We do the hybrid approach. So we like to kind of start with the non-dilutive and then we'll look at the equity. Um, we've got really a great management team as well. So tons of experience and we're always happy to provide um, insights into the industry and connections where we can as well. Um, this is just kind of an example of the funding. So typically you're starting out looking for about 250K. Um, your valuation is quite low at this point. So that's really where that government funding is going to be uh, critical. Um, and then as you grow through, we like to kind of stay engaged um, with you through the whole process, but then we'll look at doing um, further investments at kind of when the valuation hits um, 1.5 to 6 million is kind of our niche. Um, so the valuation and timing matter. So this really comes down to when you're evaluating debt versus equity. Um, so first you really need to get that market need and concept fit of your company. Um, once you do that, you can get your proof of concept or MVP. So that's really when you're, uh, ready to engage in the marketplace and kind of start looking at a higher valuation and then the product launch and early revenue. So to give you a further kind of breakdown of that, um, and if we look again at that debt versus equity, so you're looking for $300,000 early on. Um, your valuation isn't quite ready to take on that, that prime equity raise. So you're gonna give away about 30% of your company for 30,000 right now. Um, but if you look at the debt side of things, you would only pay an interest of 18,000, which seems quite reasonable. Uh, the company makes $200,000, you've got $100,000 in profit. And then if you look at the cost of capital, um, you know, you have to pay your investors a dividend. But if you look at the cost of capital, debt is clearly a better alternative versus equity. So you're looking at about 6% versus the 10% on the equity. Um, here are some of our partners that we really pride ourselves on. So again, like we're working with Shred Consultants, um, Angel Groups, accelerators across the country. And we're always happy to kind of provide our network to any entrepreneur that uh, we can as well. And then that's really the end of my presentation. I'd love to hear some questions from the crowd. And then I've also provided my um, email there. So please reach out and happy to set up a chat with you um, and kind of better understand your company and how we can help you with your financing needs. Hello. Hi, how are Hi, you? I'm good, how are you? Thank mm -hmm. you for the um, speech. I've got a few questions. So first of all, so let's imagine I have like non-governmental organization. If I apply for this program and if I get the funding from the government, so would it make it governmental? So it's no longer non-governmental, you know what I mean? Sorry, you actually kind of cut out there right at the beginning. Can you repeat the question? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I have an organization which I would love to keep it as non-governmental organization, so non-profit. So if I apply for this program and if we get the funding from, you know, from the banks, uh, from the, any organization associated with the government, would it change from no? Okay. And I've got another question. So um, are they only looking for ideas or startups that are already launched? Or are they gonna also get some funding from like for ideas that are going to be built? Not ideas, you have to typically be an incorporated company to receive funding. 
All right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Any other questions from the crowd? I like when you unmute. Not looking like that many other questions. Okay, um, well, I'm happy to end the session there. And then kind of, if anyone has some um, questions, feel free to reach out to my email and then we can even set up a time to chat as well. Great, thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate you coming. Uh, oh, actually there is a question in the chat. I just saw pop up. So um, Bob has- has incorporated for not profit. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so um, yeah, as Sarah said, she has her um, contact information there. Um, if uh, I think everybody who's attended today has um, my email address. So if you're in the Ontario region, um, specifically the Kingston Innovation Ecosystem, and you're not currently part of Queen Stead Up Runway, um, feel free to um, reach out um, to me and um, I can help to get you contacted with the right person. Um, I just see that Annabelle has put in the chat that she has a question. Uh, yes, hello. Um, uh, I'm from the Netherlands, but I live right now, I'm from Germany. Um, since we're so far away, we're not really Canadians. Uh, would me and my team still get funding, or do we need to? Would we need to uh, be Canadians for this? For Canadian funding, you would have to be Canadian, but definitely there's European grants um, that are super similar to the Canadian funding options. Okay. Do Do you have any examples? Do you know any? I primarily deal with the UK right now um, and I'm doing Innovate UK, but if you go to even just do a Google search of Euro European Union grants available, um, I was working with a company in the ocean sector that had a, a nice grant, but I can't remember the name off the top of my head. So it's going to be quite industry specific, um, but there should be quite a bit on, uh, on the internet that you can access. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's some good information. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, that helps. Yes. <laughs> so with the Innovate UK funding application, so we don't do the actual um, application process or writing, but I can connect you with someone that can do that. And then we can lend against that UK um, funding, just very similar to what we do in Canada. So like, for example, the shred um, financing, it's very in line um, to the Canadian funding. So I hope that helps. <laughs> Perfect, you're welcome. Okay, I think we're gonna leave it there, um, but feel free to reach out. I'm also on LinkedIn um, and then hopefully can connect with some of you one-on-one. -on -one.